Now let's underline all the learned theory with a practical example in the system. Okay, we are now inside S4HANA looking at the Fiori Launchpad I'm, and I'm logged in in the role of a purchaser in this case. And as you can see up here, we are um, already seeing that there are some new notifications that require our attention. And let's uh, sort them by type. What we can see here is that a lot of situations for this demo system have been triggered and I'm actually only interested in one example, which is the um, situation where the catalog item proposal is ready um, for usage. So um, there were a lot of free text items and um, combined with machine learning using uh, clustering algorithms, we found that um, a lot of similar free text items um, have been created, free text item um, requisitions and orders have been created. And um, the system is now proposing me to put a new uh, uh, item into a catalog that captures those, those free text items. And um, in this case, let me um, select the, the red one. Um, we can actually go into um, this situation and um, what we now see is the situation page. And up here we see that uh, this is a new situation. Um, this is uh, the information that we directly get that it is recommended to um, add those items into a new procurement catalog. And we also see some details where we have some usage information. For instance, we see that there was a trend from March, April and May um, that um, in this case, the uh, virtual reality headsets have been ordered a lot of times using free text items just because we do not offer this um, item in, in a catalog. And what the system now does is it um, says I should convert this situation now into a catalog item, um, meaning that I could use, for instance, this description, ergonomic virtual reality headset, and as you can see, there were a lot of different phrasings used uh, as free text from different users, but they all have been clustered and the system recommends me to use that one as a description. And it also gives me some insights on the different uh, suppliers. A recommended supplier, for instance, is being shown. Um, and and we, we get also information on the different pricings for uh, those virtual reality headsets that we had in the past and from whom we um, ordered it lately. And um, now uh, with one click here, convert to catalog item, all the information here would be um, taken um, as context and we could from here directly create a new catalog item in order to minimize those free text item uh, orders uh, for the future. And that is only one example. Let me also provide you another one. Um, therefore, again, we take a look here into our notifications and as you can see here um, we have the situation quantity deficit in suppliers delivery and when we click here again we also see that uh, this has been um, triggered twice in this case let's look at one of them and here we are now in the use case where we ordered a, a respective quantity but um, when we got the confirmation from the supplier, the ordered quantity and the confirmed quantity do not match. And um, this is what the situation tells us. So we get some information on the supplier and the product that has been ordered. Um, we also see here um, uh, until when it should be delivered in a, in a short text form and in the confirmation overview. So this is the additional information that the situation provides. So not only the notification, but also additional information. Um, and this one helps us because we see, okay, um, it was 150 um, pieces uh, or, or um, each uh, have been uh, um, have been confirmed by the supplier, but actually we ordered 200 one. So we have a deficit of 50. And here in the delivery timelines, we see also those information that there are only five days left as um, this was requested for um, next week and um, only five days are left to close this gap.
And we also get some more additional information on the supplier from which we ordered it. And now comes the third phase of the um, situation where we have an, uh, a proposal of an action um, where we have alternative suppliers for this respective material or product and um, we could from here actually choose one of those suppliers and then directly with one click create a purchase order taking all the context uh, with it um, it's being pre-filled in the purchase order and then from there you can directly trigger the order and hope um, that you will get the uh, requested items um, right in time until um, uh, the requested delivery date. So this is another example uh, of a um, situation and now let's take a quick look also um, going away from the end user perspective um, and let's take a look on what you need to do to make use of those situations. And as I already told you, uh, we deliver a lot of them out of the box. Let's take a look here into the manage situation types, application. And uh, let me quickly show you a list of all the different situation templates that we provide. So it's not only a procurement which got situation templates, but also finance and also um, manufacturing, lifecycle management, etc. And what we can then you do is, uh, in this case, we um, we're looking for procurement ones, and this is the list of all the situations similar to what you've seen on the on the slide before. Um, what we offer. And here down below we have the quantity deficit in a supplier's delivery. And what you simply need to do, and that, that does not require a heavy coding or anything, everyone um, who has a little bit of technical knowledge could do that. So um, we could take this and copy it. Then we uh, can give it a uh, respective ID and also a name, uh, how we would like to uh, name the situation. We see that it is currently disabled um, as we have not saved it yet and activated. And then in the conditions area, we can see that there are a lot of different um, filters available. And um, that means whatever you um, define here, let's say we have a deficit quantity greater than five, the other way around, greater than five. Um, that means that this situation is being triggered once we have a quantity deficit that is greater than five items. And then um, down below, we could also add some more, um, precisely um, add some more uh, um, definitions here on when this situation should be triggered. And then um, what you can do next is you can define when um, a batch job should run to see if this um, conditions are met and if the situation and also the notifications should then be triggered. Um, however, this is in this uh, situation type, it is the case for the quantity deficit. For, however, for the, um, the catalog item proposal um, use case, which we've seen um, just some minutes ago, um, this is event based. So not all the situations are job um, based, uh, shop scheduling based, but some of them are also event based. And then uh, in the next section, we have the situation display area. And here we have all the different um, notifications. So as I said, we have in-app situation messages. We have notifications that come, that come here in the little uh, bell icon on the Fiora Launchpad and we also have email notifications. And here what you can do basically is you can adjust the description and also the message details and inside here what you can do as well is you can add different, um, different parameters in order to really adjust the messages and therefore you basically just need to type um, type here that, that respective sign and then you can get, uh, can can um, choose from different parameters and those will then be filled with the respective context in which the situation arised. And um, here you could also add some URLs, for instance, into the intranet 
um, having some some precise processing steps for that person how to proceed. And then on the right side, you always get a message preview of how that will look for the end user. And um, here down below, uh, we have the notifications that come here in the Fiero Launchpad under this little bell icon. Similarly, you can also adjust here the different parameters and get a preview of how this will look from the Fiero Launchpad and down below how it will look in an email preview. Now, a lot of people think that you will get a full mass of notifications and if you have too much notifications, no one will really re react to those notifications. And that is why we added um, two possibilities. Um, first of all, you can choose if you would like to aggregate notifications for this respective situation. So whenever it is being triggered, um, let's say we have 200 times, um, uh, this situation has been triggered 200 times because we had 200 100 times a deficit, um, a quantity deficit um, in a in a order and a confirmation. And then we could say we would like to aggregate all those notifications belonging to the situation here, and you will get one notification combining all of those little use cases. And then we could also say resending notifications could be disabled. So every time this batch job runs and um, the day before you already got a notification, today it's running again. And then you could say we would like to disable the recent notification. So not every time um, again, um, when the batch job runs um, and the conditions are met, the notifications are being resended. And then comes one uh, really important area is the notification recipients. So here we have the possibility um, to define who should get um, or who should be informed about uh, the situation. And um, in this case, um, what you would need to do upfront is to use the manage teams and responsibilities application to define the teams and group of users who should receive um, situations and then you could in this case uh, for this respective situation define the responsibility so um, if there is a person who um, is responsible for a spec respective material or material group or a respective plant you could add this here and also from the member function depending on who has this member function defined in the responsibility um, application would then also um, get the notifications um, if being defined here for this member function. There's also the possibility to define responsibility rules and down below the situation monitoring where you basically can say if this situation should be monitored, should be able for monitoring, should be able to open an analytical application that provides you some insights on how often this situation has been triggered in the past. And um, maybe from those um, information you could then optimize later on um, the situation again to um, adjust according to your needs. And this is actually everything that you would need to do. And as you have seen, there is no coding needed. You can use this, copy the template and adjust it according to what you need in your company. And having said that, let's go back and take a quick look at the last slides. With that, we are at the end of this presentation. On this slide, you will find some further information in case you liked this unit and want to dig a bit deeper into the topic. Thank you and stay tuned for the future of intelligent procurement.